Hi, this is Kevin from the Mathsaurus, and in this video we're going to be looking at the IPVO VZX wireless document camera. That's this one here. And I want to start just by saying thank you to IPVO uh, for providing this product. They've provided this to me for free for the purpose of making this review, um, but it's not a sponsored review. They're not paying me anything in addition to that, and I'm free to give my honest opinion on this product. Um, if you do think you want to buy the product, I'll put um, links in the description below, so I will get some benefit if you choose to buy them through those links. I've actually had a version of this product, um, this one here, which is the uh, IPVO VZR, um, which is described here as HDMI document camera rather than wireless document camera, and I'll also talk a bit about the differences between those. Uh, in this video. By the way, the VZX, the new version, is also HDMI and it has wireless in addition. So it can, it is really uh, a strict upgrade, I would say, of the VZR. It can do everything that the VZR can do and it has the wireless capability uh, in addition to that. But I've been using the VZR for a while now um, and I already liked that product and I've mentioned it in a previous video saying that I like the IPVO products. I've even used the IPVO Ziggy um, for many, many years. Uh, before getting this one. So um, I was perhaps a little biased in favour of these products to begin with, but I do think they're really excellent tools uh, for teaching uh, both online and in the physical classroom as well. Um, you know, if you've watched my YouTube channel, which is mostly about GCSE and A-level maths, you'll see I make a lot of tutorial videos, and a lot of my earlier tutorial videos were actually made with a, a, an IPVO a Ziggy camera, and I still use them for, for many uh, videos and for online lessons and for other things. Uh, today as well. But actually, my main thing that I liked this for previously was actually for classroom use because it made it so easy to take students' work, put it under the camera, get it right on the, the screen right away. These days I use a lot of things like you know a graphic tablet to actually write directly onto the screen when that's what I want to do. But if you want to do something like putting uh, you know uh, 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 some compasses or a ruler and actually do some uh, pen and paper maths or something where you've got to have diagrams and uh, and really do a demo, having something like a document camera is is just so, so uh, useful like that. And it can also do things like scanning in uh, documents easily for you as well. I'll talk a little bit more about all of these things again as we go through the video. But what I really wanted to say, and you probably get the, the feel of this already as we're talking about this, is that I'm not a tech uh, reviewer. This is not a tech reviewing channel. This is a channel about mathematics and teaching maths mostly. And so I'm just going to tell you how I found using this product, how easy it was to set up and all of that sort of stuff. If you want the details of the tech specs, um, you can have a look at the website um, and uh, you can you can check all of that out as well. But in this video, this is going to be about, you know, how we might use this in education, what are the pros and cons and, you know, what's the difference between these two products I've got on the table here. So let's start by thinking of these two products uh, in terms of what they do that are the same. And the basic functionality of these products is very, very similar. Um, they both have these nice high res cameras in them. They both um, have this very sort of easily adjustable uh, and, and movable arm. So you could set it up uh, in this orientation. You could also, uh, you know, set it up uh, very easily um, to, to work as a webcam. Oh, okay, I'd have to, I'm upside down on the screen here, but you can flip flip the um, switch very e very easily here and become the right way up. Um, and they both use this uh, software, um, which is the um, IPVO uh, Visualizer software. And this Visualizer software has all sorts of tools in it, and many of them are accessible from the uh, VZR and the VZX themselves. So you can see um, on here we have uh, the power button to turn it on and off. Um, you can change the lock on the focus on and off directly from here. Exposure, plus and minus, zoom in and zoom out. Uh, now some of these things, uh, and so well, let's go through them all, and there's also rotate, which will do something like I've just um, done there as well. So I could have just uh, clicked uh, that uh, button. And the filters that will give you um, all sorts of different effects um, in the, in, in, on the image as well. And uh, finally, there's one that turns on the, the light on and off, so you can get a bit of extra light on the surface that you're uh, writing on 
um, if you want to. Uh, now, so so far these have exactly all the same all the same buttons here. Um, what extra does the VZX have compared to the VZR? Well, it's got this additional sort of snapshot button that I can just take a picture uh, right away from, which I don't think is on the VZR, and it's got this uh, display that tells you how charged up it is. Because, of course, the nature of it being a wireless um, product is that you can unplug it from the computer and it'll still be running off of its own power, um, unlike this one that we would always have plugged in. Now, the VZ uh, X also can just run directly from the computer. So again, you know, you don't need this to be uh, charged up uh, in order to use it if you've got it plugged in, but you can plug it, you can plug it in and it lasts, um, you know, very well, uh, more than you'd, more than you'd ever need for a single, uh, single use, um, many, many hours um, of being charged up before you can go back and plug it in and charge it up, charge it up again. Um, they've got basically the same uh, buttons on the back as well. The, they both have this HDMI feature, which is really very useful again in a, a classroom because it means that you can connect this directly to a monitor or to a projector and you don't have to connect it through the computer itself, right? So you can use it um, with software open on the on the screen and you can, uh, you know, you can do screen grabs, you can do recordings, you can interact with it in whatever way you like when it's plugged into the computer, but you could also just uh, have it without the possibility of any interference of, you know, your emails opening or anything else that goes wrong when we have things plugged into physical computers in the classroom. Direct it, you know, put it straight into the projector and you can have it there to be writing your, uh, your lessons out in front of you or to be putting your students' work underneath there or however you want to use it. So here the uh, VZX is connected directly to the monitor by the HDMI cable and uh, there is no uh, computer involved at all. The computer is turned off in fact here, um, but the uh, product is working perfectly well. So I think that is a really uh, excellent feature. Um, but so far, what I'm saying is I think both of these products are very good and I think that's very true. Um, so, so what actually really we get with the VZX is this additional, uh, addition, this additional wireless capability. So I would say from trying out the wireless features on here, they've all worked uh, very well. Um, I took a couple of minutes to uh, work out how to connect things, but um, the key thing that I noticed was something that was very obvious, that there is a button here um, that you have to switch between the wireless and the USB mode. So when I first plugged this in via USB, I thought maybe it wasn't working, but actually I just had to switch the Wi-Fi to the USB. Um, and then when you want to do in Wi-Fi mode, you switch it back to Wi-Fi mode. So I don't know really that I've got a huge number of use cases personally uh, for the Wi-Fi mode as opposed to the USB. I think it does make it a bit more versatile. I could, rather than having it right on the desk here, I could move it to a different part of the room or I could just get the wires out of the way uh, or something like that so I can see it could be useful. Perhaps if I made a different type of video where I wanted to use this um, you know, in another room where um, I was putting something under here. I don't know if I was doing a cooking tutorial rather than a math tutorial. I can imagine it could, could be quite useful to have my the laptop out of the way whilst recording um, on this or something like that. It does work very well. It does also mean that you can connect this directly to your uh, smartphone and I installed the um, IPvo visualizer software uh, on my Android phone and it worked seamlessly and immediately to be honest and I was very impressed with how quickly that works. One thing I'd say is with the Wi-Fi versus the USB is you get a slight lag um, between uh, the uh, what's going on under the camera and what comes up on the screen compared to if you've connected it via USB. And I'll show you a quick comparison of that now. So you can see when it's connected in USB mode, if I put my hand underneath here, it's on the screen immediately. So now I've got it connected in Wi-Fi mode and you can see that when I put my hand underneath, there is a bit of a delay for the image uh, appearing on the screen. So I was actually quite pleasantly surprised with this. I sort of expected to get this product and think, oh, it just does exactly the same thing as the other product and I don't really need the Wi-Fi for anything and I expect the Wi-Fi is gonna mess things up. 
and in fact actually the Wi-Fi has worked pretty seamlessly. Um, there is a slight issue again when you first um, connect it uh, that it's it doesn't necessarily work whilst keeping the internet connected but they've uh, emailed uh, a, a document through uh, right away um, which I believe gets sent to anyone who's purchased this and um, which just again there's just a couple of steps to go through in the setup and once you've done that this connects at the same time as your ordinary connection. I've actually got this set up through a wired uh, connection uh, through my PC here and it was just as good um, allowing me to connect the, the usual connection plus this um, as if it was a wireless one um, so no problems uh, there at all so I think you know both of these products are actually you know really uh, super useful um, would I have bought the upgrade if I didn't um, already if, if I already had this one uh, probably not would I buy the VZX if I didn't already have the VZR I would say it's a maybe. It's a little bit more expensive. Um, I like the extra features. Um, I don't have a huge amount of use for them, but they work very well. I can see those occasions where I might use it, and so it's a sort of luxury upgrade perhaps. The one thing actually, weirdly, that I really do like about the VZX compared to the VZR is that it's just a tiny bit taller, um, which is not what they intended to be the main use here at all. But actually the other day I was using the um, VZR for something, and I wanted just a slightly wider uh, field of view than I could get at the maximum zoom and I've noticed that um, with just this extra inch of height um, that you get on the VZX I can now get my full uh, uh, whiteboard that I used to write on underneath it um, very comfortably so there we go um, that as well as the Wi-Fi so overall I think these are great products you know I think as I said in my previous video about these I think IP very really are the market leader in these technologies there are cheaper versions you can get out there. I haven't tested them all out, haven't tried them all out. I think, you know, the cameras and things are getting much higher quality in general. So I suspect there's a lot of other products that also have uh, high resolution cameras out there. But I think the combination of how well built these are, uh, along with the visualizer software that just works uh, really well. And I think um, IPVO uh, seem to have uh, great uh, support and uh, in, in interaction with them has been very easy. So, you know, I would recommend these products. I think if you're teaching online um, and you want something that's easy to have on your desk that allows you to, uh, you know, to, to film a bit of what you're writing, maybe in conjunction with some free software like uh, OBS Studio, um, if you're streaming lessons live, or if you're recording content for the future, or you want something that also can just snap documents really easily um, that you can send to students or colleagues, then I would um, give this uh, an absolute thumbs up. So thanks again to IPVA for sending this through. Um, if you want to uh, buy either of these products, you can get them from the links in the description below. I will get a little bit of uh, commission from that if you do. Um, but uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know if you've had any experience using these products, um, if you like them, maybe how you think these two products compare, whether the uh, upgrade for the extra Wi-Fi features is worth it or not. And um, otherwise, uh, do please give this video a thumbs up uh, and subscribe to the channel um, if you're not already one of my subscribers. Usually on this channel I create a load of uh, videos to do with GCSE and A-level maths, also for the university entrance papers like Step and Timur. And I've recently got out some uh, online courses around the maths challenges, and there's going to be lots more of those coming soon as well. And I'll put all the links to that in the description below. So for now, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.